everyone and welcome to the second part of the Pioneer AVH 5150BT. This is the install part. So we're going to be installing it today in a YZ11 Nissan Cube. Might just open up the garage door or doors. These things are pretty simple to get out. Uh, start by just removing the ashtray, which looks to have some bath salts or something. Once you've got that out, there are two screws just underneath behind where the ashtray sits. Won't bother moving the camera, but I'm sure you'll be able to find them. They are quite obvious. Once you've got those out, obviously keep your screws in a safe place. I'm going to put them on the passenger seat where they'll no doubt roll away. And I'll have to find them later. Once you've got the screws out, give the bottom a good pull. And then the top, a bit of a pull. It should come straight out. Just work it around the column shift. And there'll be obviously a connector behind your hazard lights. There's a little tab that you need to push in. That's where a little screwdriver usually comes in handy unless you've got fine but ridiculously strong fingers. And there's obviously another little tab or another little connector for the cigarette lighter down the bottom. It doesn't have a tab on it. You just need to give that a good pull. All right, now to remove the old stereo. This one was a uh, Sony uh, 612BT, which was a decent stereo. I mean, it did the job for the time being. Uh, but obviously with the new Pioneer stereo, we're gonna have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. which will definitely come in handy uh, a lot more than this one would. So there's four screws holding the stereo in. Once you've got those out, it's pretty simple. This whole unit will just come out. Uh, and as you can see, you've got all the wiring back here. Just unplug the old one. Get the old connectors off there this is where little silly fingers would come in handy just unplug as you can see there's two USB cables on this thing actually that's a HDMI I think it's actually an MHL cable so it doubles as a USB because uh, this thing did have mirror link but it was finicky at best, hardly ever worked. Uh, we will need to remove this little glove box over here because the USB cables have actually been wired underneath it, so I have to pull that out. It's held in by two screws. There's one just under here, underneath the glove box, and one a bit further over. Once again, you can't really miss them if you end up needing to take this out. So remove those two screws. And then this little glove box should pull straight out. Might have to open up the cup holder a little bit just to Work it around. Watch out for your chewing gum. There we go. Now we can get those USB cables out. There's actually a little a little cut underneath where the glove box is to feed the USB cables through, so I'll probably reuse that because it's a good spot to just be able to plug your phone in and just chuck it in that little 
uh, little part there. So here's the old wiring. I actually used wire little terminal blocks. There was going to be a version of this video where we used the ISO connector for what is supposed to be this particular Nissan. Um, but it turns out the wiring on it is actually actually doesn't match up to the cube's wiring. Uh, so whether the cube is non-standard or I've just been an idiot and bought the wrong one, I'm not sure. So we're going to be using the wiring harness that came with the stereo and then just using these little terminal blocks. Luckily enough everything's labelled pretty clearly. It's also labelled in Japanese possibly which doesn't really help me, but I'll also provide a link down below uh, just to for all the color coding on all these wires in case yours are not labeled uh, but it's probably safe to assume that this particular model the Z11 and the YZ11 possibly BZ11 I think there is are all gonna have the same wiring. So let's disconnect this old stuff which is pretty simple. Um, much prefer to use these little terminal blocks over twist and tape job. They seem to hold together a little bit better. Get all that out of the way. And our other wire block, so we're gonna just reuse this with the new wiring harness. Just undo all these old wires for the old stereo. There we have it. So this compact little guy, like I said, it's pretty neatly named. Uh, so it shouldn't be too hard to work out what needs to go where. Uh, and obviously that connects straight onto there. This part seems to have wiring to go to the handbrake. and just a ground wire for a bit of power. So that's probably useful, obviously, with the handbrake sensor wire. It's pretty standard with stereos like this because they don't want you using all the features like watching a DVD while you're driving down the road. Uh, so once the handbrake is off, it'll actually disable those features. Uh, you can get around this by just connecting the sensor wire directly to ground. That way it'll constantly think that the handbrake's on. Doesn't work with some other stereos from what I've heard. And I'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not you want to do that. I'm not going to get into the legality of it. Needless to say, it's probably not a good idea. But I will leave that decision up to you. Okay, so we're going to get the new wiring harness, which is what the one that came with the stereo. Uh, seeing as the other one I bought isn't going to work out. Um, but that's fine, it's all pretty straightforward, you know, it's all labelled. There's not really a lot of guesswork here, which is good, because it would suck if there was. So let's get to wiring.
Alright, so that's the wiring taken care of. Now it's time to put in the new stereo. Obviously you'll have to mount it back into the dash piece where the old stereo was, which I've already taken out. Uh, and the screw holes should line up just fine. Uh, but for now we're just going to plug it in to demonstrate that everything is working. Give it life. All right, here we go. takes a minute for the first boot up and yeah once again just like the manual you get a choice of English Spanish or Portuguese so that's about it for this part of the video it's pretty straightforward to put everything back together I'm sure you won't struggle with that so join us for part three which will be the review of this unit once again thanks for watching be sure to hit the like button and leave me any comments down below and subscribe. Cheers.